Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is a 12 valve Cummins engine. The 12 valve Cummins diesel engine is one of the greatest engines ever built. I'm about to test this one thoroughly, but to find out about that, let's rewind like two weeks or something. If you're gonna do something stupid, film it. <laughs> you're fine. It's a heck of an angle. And the tail's kind of going on the ground. Is there anything up there for these tires to hit? No. <laughs> well, keep on going. <laughs> you're committed now. Well, is there more plywood up there? No. You're fine. It's just gonna hit the jacking? Yeah, you're fine. You're sure about that? Yes. I don't know what you're worried about. No, you're right. Keep on going. Keep on going. All right, that's good. You're up. It died. Look. It's better than I thought. It's a ramp truck with a car on it. Ooh. Mission accomplished. Whoa, YouTube ah. looks weird now. Anyway, Tom did a detailed video on this truck over on his Rocket Restorations YouTube channel. So if you want to see that, kind of go in depth, and get the details, which I did not film, just go check it out. I'll put a link to that in the thingy, which is over here now for some reason. The history of great ideas, uh, this. Who's ready to go racing? I found my missing winch controller. What a lovely day. What a lovely sight. Also terrifying. Needs a step. Also, new deck wood. Sketchy, yes, but it's pretty sick. Look at that grill. That's a beautiful thing. This might come as a shock, but it actually seems to kind of drive okay like that. Now let me explain what we've really achieved here. You see, Tom collects all kinds of vehicles that I want, and space around here is at a premium. So now what we're doing is we're stacking them vertically to maximize the available parking spots. This is like the world's sketchiest ramp truck i don't even know that it should be called that really it's just a long flatbed with some dinky little ramp attachments stuck on the back my ideal ramp truck has like a swept line cab or maybe even a cab over cab and a longer bed that's less sketchy and toolboxes and a hydraulic boom but that's another video entirely always follow your dreams even if they're kind of dumb don't mind me just off-roading a loaded ramp truck should have tried to drift this corner. I have regrets. Hey, that's where I buried that Imperial. Yeah, that's where we're going, kind of. So proud, so majestic. So I have a genius plan, and my genius plan is to drive this nightmare home. It's only about an hour, and it's mostly back roads, but, but we were kind of going over just how illegal this is a minute ago. First off, it's licensed to a dead man still. Second off, it's a one ton with 2,800 plus pounds of car stacked on the bed. The bed is not good. The ramp storage does leave a bit to be desired. There's no license plate. Some of the lighting was deemed extra long ago. If your load extends three feet beyond the back of your truck, you need to have a red flag to warn other drivers in Washington. Now, depending on how you measure, it's fine. You know, if that's the back of the truck, it's only two and a half feet. But if that's the back of the truck, well, it's another matter. The emergency brakes aren't. The bed is, let's say, poorly attached to the frame. Oh, I might've figured out why the fuel gauge doesn't work. Yeah, because it's the wrong tank or the wrong sending unit or the wrong wiring on the frame. Oh yeah, this tank is actually shot. Like maybe literally shot. The wipers don't work. You kind of need your wipers to work in Washington. I think the tires are old enough to drink, so that's good. And it's just generally smashed and falling to pieces everywhere. Oh, we can't forget the lack of overloads and the collapsed rear springs. This thing is like an inch and a half off the bump stops right now at rest. Well, this probably isn't very important, but the exhaust is only four inches off the ground too. So yeah, basically what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> 
It does have brake lights, but they're almost impossible to see. Ooh, my dart. Anyway, we're gonna park it in the one available hole back here so it can get filled with bees. Ah, uh, I forgot the stupid window fell in the door again because I forgot it's not really on the tracks and rolled it down. It's fine. I just bent the door with my bare hand so I could reach in and grab the window. Fixed forever, basically. This thing seems to be remarkably capable off-road, he said as he buried it in grass. Don't hit the priceless artifacts. The bees are mad. Tom was right. All that extra weight over the back tires, very good for traction. So now it's here, next to the Bluesmobile and getting eaten by bees. Might even come back out later. Oh yeah, looking good over here. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, stung man walking. Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm really glad you volunteered. Don't roll the window down. Noted. Nice. The 12 valve Cummins is just amazing. Tom, the spot I buried a car three weeks ago. Yeah, so remember those tires? We're gonna take the three kind of decent ones off of that truck, put them on that truck, and then we'll see if maybe they all hold air all the way home. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, I forgot the 63 needs a water pump. Anyway, now I have to steal this kind of good battery from it so we can start the other Cummins. So we can bring it over here and steal all the good tires. You know what I mean by good. Ugh. I guess we're good. Oh, ah, really? Oh, get out of here. Why? Really? <sighs> Come on. Show off. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I was gonna say I might need that exhaust system. I think it would be really easy to remove. Yeah, that one just kind of never stopped smoking. Oh yeah, also no power steering. I think I chose the right truck, just saying. It makes so many horrible noises. It's really fun. Strangely, the bees don't really mind the smoke. So unfortunately, the two steer tires on this crappy white truck are the best ones we have anywhere near to here. The wheels are nice. You know, these aren't dry rotted, but I guarantee they're ancient. Uh-huh. When these are your good tires, you're in trouble. You know, it might be time for shocks. I know this will come as a shock, but this truck's heavy with a car on it. This is just super dumb. Ah, <laughs> oh, see if the truck rolls away and I die. Yeah, it wants to. Yeah. <sighs> Tom was afraid the rear brakes were seized and the good news is they're not. The front ones, I'm not so sure. We think this whole rig is like 10,000 pounds, but of course, most of it's back here. Good times. It's like they planned it this way. I swear he said he was going to spray all of them. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, everything's going great. I'm tired. Anyway, word of the wise on dually rims. Some axles have a pin that locates the wheels so they lock together correctly. This particular axle doesn't. So all I'm going to do is make sure that these cones that alternate in and out are facing the right way with the other wheel so they sync together and I'm sure that'll be fine. The other truck did have a pin, and of course I screwed that up. 
You'll know you've screwed it up when you're trying to tighten your lug nuts down and the wheel won't go straight. Keep an eye out for that. I might have allegedly gotten that wrong on a motorhome once and driven it around the block that way. That was fun. Oh, this side does have a pin. What do you mean? I'm fine. Listen, this is all bad, but it could be worse. Man, I love dualies. Also, that's not enough. Oh, come on. Dang it. The long hose is great, so you can be really far away when the tire blows up. Yeah, and remember, that's my second best tire. Well, my second best rear tire. The front steer tires are decent. They're also smaller. I don't think we're going for 80. The single rating is 60. That sounds safer. One down, five to go. Hey, here's the good news. Just one of these tires can basically carry the Valiant by itself. And we've got four of them back here. Well, that's all the good news I got. Well, I dumped three quarts of transmission fluid in it and it seems to actually go in gear now, so that's nice. To deal with the whole no license plate problem, I bought one of these. They're good for three days and they cost $33. You're supposed to put it in the back window of the truck, but uh, you can't see the back window of the truck. So I think I'll put it up here. Before I fill it out, I think we'll take this thing for a test drive and make sure there's at least a chance it'll make it home. Wow, the heater actually works. Let's test the air conditioning. Not holding my breath. Did I mention the wait to start light sticks on? Did I mention this truck actually only has 141,679 original miles? That's pretty cool. Okay, there's something funny about that. The seatbelt's rusted to this adjustment point, but that's fine, because apparently the last guy was about my size. Don't say that it's sketchy. And did you say that it scares you? Baby, I don't want to know. Yeah, I enhance brakes, kind of. This is not good. Yeah, the front tires aren't round. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's so bad. It death wobbles at like 30. Yeah, front left brakes dragging. Might need to hit that caliper with a hammer. Sometimes that works. I think these tires are just horribly flat spotted. Not uncommon when things sit forever. If I drive up and down this road enough times, they might even out. Maybe. Yeah, so front left brake seized and doesn't do anything when hitting the pedal. Well, it almost made it a mile. How about that? Someday, smell a vision I once had a service body truck just like this. It had the same problem, even on the same side. Here's how I fixed it. Did that like three times and it was good to go. Admittedly, that truck didn't sit in a field for 20 or 30 years, but I digress. Ooh, free zip tie. Listen, the hammer works, okay? Okay, it still doesn't actually do any braking. Yep, it locked up again instantly. Okay, well, that's great. I mean, there is one on that other truck, but it's probably no better, frankly. Okay, well, test drive, not great. Oh, the brake smell. Now it's actually smoking, kinda. Over here at the white truck, I stole all the tires off of this wheel. Well, kind of turns sometimes. Kind of. Oh, come on. Still not very well. And uh, there's some other cool problems too. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't pick this one. Whee! All right, I got my brake unseizing toolkit loaded up. I'm gonna go throw some more diesel in this thing for safety because running out would be really awkward. And uh, I'm gonna see if the tires will smooth out any. If so, we'll probably just hit the road. All right, it's getting better. There's no question of that. I was able to hit 40 and I didn't die. So that's cool. Huh, now it's pulling right. Maybe I need to hit that caliper with a hammer. Other than the brakes and the tires and the alignment, this isn't bad. It drives okay. Rides nice enough. Definitely needs airbags in the back to handle this weight. Mopar psychos will look at this and just think, 
Hell yeah. Here's how you put fuel in the ramp truck. I am not gonna fill it yet. I know exactly what'll happen if I fill it. Also, yes, diesel is stupidly expensive at this station. Should have washed it. Mm. When I was a younger man, I used to practice something called hypermiling. In hypermiling, you try to get the best fuel economy possible. And one of the main ways you do that is by driving as though you don't have brakes. So, whee, I'm just gonna try and do that in this truck. If I don't hit the brake pedal, the caliper won't seize. If the caliper won't seize, it'll keep rolling and the brakes won't catch on fire. It could just work. There's 45 and I'm not dead yet. But give it time. Can it pull the hill? Of course it can, because Cummins. Also because I don't think the converter lock or the overdrive are working. I think they're on toggle switches that seem to do nothing. So far, so good. Oh good, the death wobble is back. Jeez. Yeah. Now the passenger brake's actually hotter than the driver one now. I can actually feel a clunk in the wheel. Probably loose steering linkage, which is what's trying to throw me off the road with death wobble. Well, I've reviewed the footage. I think it's all in the gearbox. I don't know if that's better or worse. If it weren't for the horrible death wobble problem that comes and goes, this wouldn't be so bad. Currently, I think driving at home is probably a really horrible idea. Oh look, free spare tire. If you somehow don't know anything about these trucks, this is what's referred to by collectors and enthusiasts as a first gen. That is a first generation Cummins powered truck. It has a slightly updated version of the same cab Dodge used starting in 1972 until 1993. This is a 1992 model. Because it's a 1992, it's got an intercooler. These trucks are total hunks of garbage, but I love them. I think I've owned about seven of them. The very first one I bought with the hopes of building something that could do this. Now, if you saw Tom's video on this truck, you know this whole bed toe setup is just sketchy. It's bad. It's so bad. But I think with some modifications to this bed, the addition of like a dovetail or whatever they call that, fresh decking and some other choice improvements, this could be a really great car hauler. It just isn't right now. Ooh, an LE model. That's supposed to mean something. That's what a clogged cat sounds like. This truck doesn't have like everything. It's got manual windows, manual locks, no cruise control. It does have fancy wood grain on the dash, so, you know, there's that. Oh yes, and a cloth seat. Although actually, I think I prefer the perfect vinyl one in the crappy white truck. But is the power unlimited? Oh, that was a shift. Uh, I would say the power is quite limited. The blinkers do work, although you wouldn't know it from in here. Whatever's causing the wobble, I could feel it when cornering. I think it's in the front left. It's not ideal. I can almost get it to 50, almost. The lack of an overdrive is not ideal. I happen to know from other trucks that when it drops into overdrive, it builds more boost and you have more power. And the lack of a lockup is bad too. That can build extra heat in the torque converter. The lockup transmission is great. It's also much more efficient. Well, it's going straight now. Ah! I was gonna say it's shaking less, but th that is not the case. Okay, yeah, super great. I'm pretty sure I hear the exhaust bouncing off the ground too. Well, I got it to 55. Yeah, I just don't know. I gotta make a decision right now. I can get home slowly, but if I wait any longer, I won't have enough time to do that. And I'd hate to make Mrs. Jamie annoyed. Yeah. I mean, other than smelling like brake fire, cruise is okay. It's just slow, and I really wish the overdrive worked. Okay, well, <laughs> now the brake pedal doesn't really do much. I think both the fronts are trying to be on fire. <sighs> 
You know, I've got a good few bucks into this already, and am I regretting it? A little bit. Gotta be honest. I've always wanted a truck with ramp truck capabilities, but this is not exactly what I had in mind. Kind of wanted something bigger and more stick shifty. Taking this one home was just a crime of opportunity, really. I mean, it's an intercooled Cummins with an overdrive automatic. Well, what's supposed to be an overdrive automatic. So it's kind of a no-brainer. And it's got my Valiant parked on the bed, so that just makes things really easy. But I cannot hit the highway with the knowledge that five miles down the road, the brakes will probably be on fire and definitely won't work for crap. That's just not good. Ooh. Mountain. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna let this thing sit here and let the brakes cool off and then limp it back to rocket and probably put it back in the field where it was. I think I've got the death wobble thing figured out too. It's only happening after the left caliper starts seizing again. So yeah, if I get a set of calipers and pads, pretend the rotors are fine because I don't want to deal with them at all. They've got those big dually extensions on them. Ah, throw in some brake hoses for flavor. Then we'd probably be somebody. But I also need to take my power probe to all this nonsense that's supposed to control the transmission and doesn't for some reason. Oh, I just heard sizzling noises. That was cool. You know, this really could be a constricted hose too. Sometimes they'll let pressure through, but they won't allow it to release fully, and that can lead to a dragon caliper. The rubber on that one looks pretty good, except for that weird chew spot right there. So yeah, I mean, hoses, good idea. Listen, I'm not mad. I'm also not surprised. This thing sat in a yard for a really long time, so. In the history of bad ideas, this was definitely up there. I did waste almost an entire day on this. It's still coming, so it's still cool. It's just also a pile. Wait for what? Okay, now it's the right caliper. And it's somehow worse than the left was. Oh, these poor brake rotors. I really hope they survive this experience. Now we're cooking. Just have to keep this thing handy at all times. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, this'll work for sure. And now it's back to the left. Nice. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna put it back in the field. It's where it belongs. Seemed happy there. Dude, I just beat on the left caliper, but the right one seized again pulling in here. This is just hilarious. Also, really stupid. Random cat? What are you doing? All right, I'm just gonna leave it for the bees, I guess. Well, I'm not necessarily giving up 100% on this. I'll be back with brake parts and a power probe and a dream, but it's probably gonna be a few weeks, so we'll all just have to wait till then for the thrilling conclusion. Will this ramp truck, ramp truck, will it drive an hour home with that Valiant on its back? Will it do things after that ever? I don't know. We'll find out together. Until then, as ever, thank you very much for watching. You're helping me in my quest for global domination, which is getting closer and closer to my grasp every day, so. Sincerely, thanks. And remember, only you can prevent brake fires. You know what? I'm just gonna let it drive itself off into the sunset. Can't even do that right. At least this thing will almost certainly get me home. I'm still smelling burning brakes. Yeah, it's just on me.